Australian population. Mm. First, because India has enormous potential to substitute for China uh, as a market and as a source of goods in our vital supply chains. And second, uh, because India is the world's emerging mm. democratic superpower and uh, in the world right now, we sure need another democratic superpower uh, to help the United States uh, to maintain a rules-based global order. Uh, this rules-based global order is under massive challenge, uh, obviously from Russia in Ukraine, but in our part of the mm. world, particularly from China. And uh, this is where I think India uh, has so much potential mm. to be a force for good. India has uh, democracy, uh, the rule of law, mm. uh, to a considerable extent the English language, the world's common language. Mm. And this is why I think uh, in the decades to come, if there is to be a leader of the free world, it's as likely to be the Indian Prime Minister as the American President. Uh, Mr. Abbott, uh, because uh, you, you're making a very interesting point here. There has been a lot of focus on the Western powers like the United States of America and the United Kingdom and Europe in general. Do you think it is time also for Australia and India to rise together and be seen as those big superpowers in a global changing order? A absolutely. Uh, one of the great things about the Modi Prime Ministership uh, is that under Prime Minister Modi, India is starting to take its rightful place uh, in the world's global leadership councils. Uh, I think India is now taken extremely seriously, uh, not just uh, in the region and on the subcontinent, uh, but right around the world, as it should be, uh, because not only is India now the world's most populous country, uh, it's uh, um, in nominal terms uh, the world's fifth largest economy, in purchasing power terms, it's mm. probably substantially bigger than that. And I think that the upside potential in India is simply massive. And uh, I think it would be all to the good uh, mm. of uh, India and indeed uh, of democracies everywhere, mm. including Australia, uh, for India to be playing a maximal leadership role uh, in the months, years and decades to come. And, that's exactly what I think uh, India has been doing under Prime Minister Modi. What would be your focus, uh, do you think, should be in this meeting? Uh, how has your relationship been with Prime Minister Modi? You met him previously as well uh, until 2021. There have been a lot of uh, times that those uh, meetings have taken place. So do tell us what are your expectations from Prime Minister Modi's visit to Australia, one. And secondly, about your relationship with Prime Minister Modi. Um, when I was Prime Minister, the two most impressive figures on the world stage uh, were Narendra Modi and Shinzo Abe, and between them, they are chiefly responsible for the Quad, uh, which I think is the most important strategic development uh, since the formation of NATO uh, back in the late 1940s. Um, I've always had a very warm uh, relationship with Prime Minister Modi, uh, I appreciate the fact that he isn't just another politician. He's also a deeply spiritual man. I appreciate the fact that he mm. does want to reach out to the wider world uh, rather than simply focus uh, on subcontinental affairs. Um, one of the great things that uh, Prime Minister mm. Modi and I were able to do together uh, was initiate the India-Australia trade talks. Yes. Uh, just... Uh, a few months back, they came to fruition uh, in the ECTA agreement. Mm. I think the important thing is for both sides to make the most of that. And mm. the point I keep making to major Australian businesses is, please, uh, just as a few decades ago, you all had a China strategy. Uh, now that so much of that has been thwarted and frustrated, mm. now you all need to have an India strategy. Uh, because, as I say, uh, India is an extraordinary potential source uh, of markets for Australia, of resource and energy security uh, yes. Australia can provide to India. Uh, and then, of course, there's, uh, there's the supply chain gaps, which I think India is mm. extremely well placed to fill. 
Mr. Abed, uh, because uh, China appeared as uh, and tried to emerge as a challenger to the United States of America, but uh, it's also been amid a lot of controversies with the aggression that China has led with. Do you think that's one of the reasons that in Asia specifically, it can be an Indian century, it can be a time of India where with its democracy like you're mentioning, and perhaps not the aggression that China has followed, it can become one of those global friends that the world needs at a time like this? Well, I've often said, and I think it's absolutely been true, um, that America is the only country that has had uh, both the strength and the benevolence uh, to be, if you like, the world's policeman. But I think in coming decades, India uh, has the capacity to likewise have the kind of strength and benevolence uh, that America has shown over the last uh, uh, 70 years in which arguably Britain showed in the century before that. So um, I think that uh, there's enormous potential uh, for India to exercise liberal democratic leadership, uh, not just in our region, but throughout the world. It started to do this under Prime Minister Modi, and I hope this very much continues. Mr. Abbott, let's talk about your Indian experience and connection as well. You have visited Delhi, you've visited our country. Anything that you remember as a fond memory, what is it about India that you like, apart from, of course, the official meetings that you've indulged in, Mr. Abbott? Well, Pooja, uh, my first trip to India was back in 1981 when I was uh, quite young. I was a student backpacking my way uh, from Australia to England. And I thought it would be discourteous of me to fly over uh, hundreds of millions of Indians without paying them a visit. So I had almost three months backpacking around India, starting in Bombay, uh, moving through Rajasthan to Delhi, up into Kashmir. Uh, and eventually I went to Bihar, Bihar province, where the Australian Jesuits had a mission. Uh, I spent uh, uh, quite a few weeks uh, helping in the schools in Hazari Bag, in Bokaro Steel City, in Dalton Ganj and elsewhere. Uh, I have very fond memories of that trip. Um, I loved the work that the Australian Jesuits were doing, uh, but I also loved the way uh, the Indian people were so keen uh, to better themselves and mm. were so keen uh, to make the most of all of their heritage, including Mm. Uh, the heritage of, uh, of recent times mm. and uh, so keen to make the most of their education. And I certainly did my best uh, uh, when I was uh, a, a young graduate in those uh, schools in Bihar mm. uh, to try to encourage that quenchless curiosity which is at the heart of any person who really wants to make a difference and be a force for good. That's very heartening to hear that you had uh, good experience and memories. And I'm, I'm also pleasantly surprised that you remember all the names of all the states and the areas that you visited. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mr. Abbott. Uh, the last time Prime Minister Modi visited Australia, you were the Prime Minister. Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about, I mean, we've discussed it already, but about uh, your interactions at that point. What was the focus then? And do you think uh, that has helped make a bridge, form a bridge from where other issues are also now being dis discussed with uh, Prime Minister Anthony Albert? Well, there's absolutely no doubt that uh, every Australian Prime Minister uh, wants, wants uh, to be a good friend uh, of the Indian Prime Minister. But I think there's no doubt that uh, Prime Minister Modi has gone the extra mile, um, as, as well as his ministers. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, Foreign Minister Jai Shankar has mm. been to Australia three times in just the last 12 months. So so India, to its credit, is making a big effort with Australia. Mm. And I think that Australia, particularly in my time, mm. in Prime Minister Morrison's time, and now in Prime Minister Albanese's time, is, is making a big effort with India. Um, I'll never forget uh, spending time with Prime Minister Modi uh, back in 2014. Uh, his speech to the Australian Parliament uh, was uh, uh, a wonderful, wonderful speech. Uh, he got a rock star welcome um, from Australians, particularly Australians yes. of Indian background. He responded to them with enormous warmth and enthusiasm. And uh, 
I think he really did feel uh, very much at home here. Hmm. And I've got to say, whenever I visit India, uh, while India is, I suppose, uh, exotic uh, by Australian standards, you never feel like a stranger. You never feel like you're a foreigner in India. And I certainly want to see uh, a great sense of warmth um, uh, between Australians and Indians, hmm. uh, because I think that can only be good for uh, both countries and for the wider world. Mr. Abbott, on behalf of all Indians, I would uh, love to see you back in India and visit many more places. It's a diverse nation. But importantly, you've made some very important points, and that's about democracy standing with each, uh, with each other to ensure that the next changing global order will have nations like Australia and India as friends. And you have been a part of forming those friendship and bridges as well. Former Prime Minister of Australia, Mr. Tony Abbott, thank you very much for speaking to India Today Television. Thank you, Pritja. Let's go on the ground then in Australia. What is the present situation in Sydney looking like? What are the preparations and specifically arrangements by the Indian diaspora? Senior journalist Vishal Monga in Sydney is joining me in this telecast. Vishal, over to you. Uh, we had this conversation with Tony Abbott just right now and he was of course praising how Indian diaspora and Indians and uh, now Prime Minister's visitors as well has contributed in forging that friendship between Australia and India. You tell us now what is Sydney looking like today with the right of PM Modi. And as you can see, the celebration is not great, man. We are here to welcome Prime Minister Narendra Modi. If you see, there is ground in Denver. How many people are expected to be here by the month of October? What I can tell you is that five new weddings will be down in the start. There will be a very important people who will be a continual investigation in the stadium. What I can show you right now is the preparation that I've been on. These events will be performed inside the stadium. As of now, uh, they're practicing outside and we are Okay. Stay on with me, stay on with me Vishal. We want to just dip into the audio right now. A lot of uh, whole drama there, all of that there with the Indian diaspora uh, that has uh, made all these arrangements for Prime Minister Modi's welcome. So let's uh, dip in, meanwhile, to all the reactions that have come in about Prime Minister Modi's arrival there. He's met a business horn chosen Australia and the Indian diaspora. Prime Minister, of course, is a very impressive person who uh, understands business, um, which is very encouraging as well. The Prime Minister talked about his uh, dreams for India and, he, and his ethic, which was a really powerful message. Australian Super does uh, invest in, in India, of course, and in particular the National Indian Infrastructure Fund. And we've had very good experience uh, in, in investing in India. We acknowledged together that the fossil fuel sector has only limited time to run and it must be replaced with a fuel which causes no harm but can do everything which coal, oil and gas can do. I also thanked him for his humanitarian efforts. Under Prime Minister Modi, he's been able to spread economic growth throughout the grassroots of India. This has really helped with uh, eliminating one country after another. We all have to do it, um, slavery from India, and I've showed my gratitude for that. Right now we are in front of the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So a group of eight, a group of eight people they have climbed this bridge and we have made the history. First it was Modi Airways in the morning 6:30 that uh, took off from Melbourne to Sydney. That happened first time and now we have climbed this harbour bridge. You can see here this is Australia India friendship climb and we are here. There are two pillars. You can see that every friendship has two pillars. We have seen the friendship from. Mahabharat, where we have, you know, Krishna Arjuna or where, where we have Krishna and Sudama. So similarly, Australian and Indian PM, they are meeting here. As we can see the tallest uh, arc bridge in front of me, you can see that we are meeting our tallest leader of the world. You can see the excitement in the diaspora. What I can say, Namo is best, east or west, Namo is the best. And today we have gathered around 18,000 Indian diaspora who have come from different states 
to see or to hear their uh, beloved prime minister modi i have written a song for him if i get a chance i i will i would like to uh, i would like to sing that song in front of this camera everyone will sing with me yeah. namo 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 oh, namo 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 suraj sa tej dikhe jis mein taaron si jagmag ho suraj sa tej dikhe jis mein taaron si jagmag ho namo 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 well we just welcoming modi you know prime minister here in sydney and uh, you know we are very excited to see him so we are you know he's a great person he's a um, you know great uh, prime minister and uh, we all welcome welcoming here since he came as a prime minister of india i have seen that reputation and the international value of india has increased i've been here since 19 19 years and before 2014s indians were poor indians and since then suddenly brand image of indians has been increased Let's take you through all the latest developments that have come in from Australia with regard to Prime Minister Modi's visit. Let's begin. Prime Minister Modi arrived in Sydney. This is the third and final leg of the three-nation visit on Monday night. He was received by Australian High Commissioner to India Barry O'Farrell and other officials upon the arrival. Members of the Indian diaspora gave a grand welcome by the uh, in Australia as Prime Minister Modi landed in sydney last night several indians were seen sporting the tricolor wearing the turban excited to meet their leader apart from that there were serious uh, business interactions as well top australian ceos met prime minister modi in sydney he pitched india among the top investment destinations in the world prime minister invited australian ceos to partner with india's growth story About 170 Indian origin people took a chartered flight booked the whole aircraft from Melbourne to Sydney to attend Prime Minister's event members of the Indian Australian Diaspora Foundation sporting a tricolor themed turban waving national flag dancing their way to the flight named by Prime Minister supporters as Modi Airways All right so as in when more interactions and an event by the diaspora begins we'll be cutting across live to that let's now give you an update about the heat wave that has struck us already specifically in the north indian states uh, there is uh, the temperature the mercury that's soaring already and uh, we are being told that there are not just delhi ncr but parts of haryana punjab also witnessing scorching heat temperature have crossed 44 degree mark in most places this is the first widespread heat over such a large part including parts of uttar pradesh madhya pradesh even covering isolated pockets of jharkhand and bengal as per the med department light rain shower are expected to bring relief in delhi from wednesday onward for 3 to 4 days <laughs> Uh, moisture incursion is there in northwest india and uh, already rajasthan say three utc temperatures have fallen slightly so we are expecting that rajasthan temperatures will fall slightly but heat wave conditions will persist and from tomorrow we will see amelioration because there's a fresh western disturbance coming so medium upper level clouds will cover the uh, sky and we moisture also incursion will start so we are expecting that temperatures will start to fall over this entire region and heat wave conditions will सर मैं ये जानना चाहूंगा कि लगातार गर्मी जो है वो तेजी के साथ बढ़ रही है कल दिल्ली में 40 डिग्री के आसपास टेम्परेचर जो है वो पहुंचा है आज की अगर बात करें तो क्या टेम्परेचर का स्तर है देखिए आज के लिए हमने हीट वेव का अलर्ट येलो अलर्ट जारी किया हुआ है और आज जो है टेम्परेचर हमारे पास उन्हीं एरिया में लगभग जहाँ पर आप बात करें सर नजफगढ़ और रजफरपुर और साथ में देखेंगे पीतमपुरा दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी के आसपास के जो एरिया है यहाँ पर टेम्परेचर 45 से छियालीस डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड आज भी रिकॉर्ड किया जाएगा और जो कि आप कह सकते हैं हीट वेव की कंडीशन फुलफिल करेगा तो दिल्ली में आज हीट वेव हमारे पास रहेगा और जो बाकी आपका रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑब्जर्वेटरीज है वहाँ पर टेम्परेचर जैसे कि सफदरजंग में लगभग तैतालीस और चौवालीस के बीच में रिकॉर्ड किया जाएगा अगर मैप के जरिए समझे तो दिल्ली यहाँ में दिख रही है उसके आसपास के एरिया के अंदर बादल जो है वो दिखाई दे रहे क्या माना जाए कि बारिश की कब तक संभावना है या वेस्टर्न डिस्टर्बेंस है जो आएगा देखिए अभी आप नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया में प्लेन्स में देखेंगे तो दिल्ली के आसपास आपको ब्लैक सा एरिया दिख रहा है इसका मतलब है हमारे पास इस एरिया में कोई भी क्लाउड नहीं है जैसे यूपी में 
दिल्ली में हरियाणा में पंजाब में और राजस्थान में ऑलमोस्ट क्लाउड हमारे पास नहीं है इसका मतलब है स्काई क्लियर है जो सन की एनर्जी है पूरी सफिशिएंट अमाउंट में आ रही है इसलिए हमारे पास टेम्परेचर सिर्फ दिल्ली एनसीआर में नहीं पूरे इन राज्यों में पंजाब हरियाणा पश्चिमी उत्तर प्रदेश और नॉर्थ राजस्थान में भी बढ़ रही है और ये आज बढ़ी रहेगी पूरे रीजन में So if you are venturing out ensure you're wearing a protected gear carrying a water bottle and don't let the heat wave strike you. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned lots more on the other side after a very short break. We get to the big story about the 2000 rupee note. That what are the options that are available to you to exchange to deposit in the banks? What are the procedure like? We get you the latest from the ground. Stay tuned. forecast now Delhi maximum 43 and minimum 32 degrees Mumbai maximum 31 and minimum 28 degrees Kolkata maximum 39 and minimum 26 degrees Bangalore maximum 34 and minimum 23 degrees Chennai maximum 33 and minimum 28 degrees Hyderabad maximum 38 and minimum 25 degrees Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. is there enough understanding of lifestyle diseases that's the big question the only news channel to focus on what matters the most and that is your health india's news tv industries only health show india today's relentless effort to bring to you the best reports and the best medical and wellness experts on health lifestyle wellness and more watch health 360 with sneha mordani at these times only on india today forecast now Delhi maximum 43 and minimum 32 degrees Mumbai maximum 31 and minimum 28 degrees Kolkata maximum 39 and minimum 26 degrees Bangalore maximum 34 and minimum 23 degrees Chennai maximum 33 and minimum 28 degrees Hyderabad maximum 38 and minimum 25 degrees
traveling from different parts armed with facts looking at political facts she takes the news bites home do you think the future of these students are not hampered fears bold and direct setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle expect nothing but the unfiltered truth news first niceties later watch me nabila jamal on india today make your media plan smarter with india today live tv on your connected devices amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers to advertise mail us at sales at ajtag.com is there enough understanding of lifestyle diseases that's the big question the only news channel to focus on what matters the most and that is your health india's news tv industry's only health show india today's relentless effort to bring to you the best reports and the best medical and wellness experts on health lifestyle wellness and more watch health 360 with sneha mordani at these times only on india today Thousand rupee note exchange begins at the bank. You will need no slip, no identity proof for the exchange. But ten notes of two thousand is the limit per swap, and you can also deposit in the banks. Prime Minister Modi kick-starting the Australia tour by meeting with company CEOs and businessmen. Former Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott speaks to India today, hails Prime Minister Modi and India, and calls Modi a natural leader of the free world. It's old politics over new parliament. Opposition targets the Prime Minister over inauguration, claims it's an insult to the President. Bharatiya Janata Party slams the Congress Party over parliament hypocrisy, cites Indira and Rajiv example. 2024 Gathbandhan talks are getting fast tracked Nitish Kumar intensifying mission opposition Arvind Kejriwal to meet Mamata Banerjee and Uddhav Thackeray for support Karnataka mantri may just have slipped out a massive revelation that about no power sharing formula he claims Sita Ramaya will remain chief minister for 5 years NI team are visiting London right now to investigate into the Indian mission attack in Mar- on March 19th. Five member NI team leaving for London to probe the Khalistan extremists attack on Indian High Commission remember in the month of March. Our top story this morning breaking piece of information that's coming in from Bengaluru at the moment it's killer civic apathy in Bengaluru a 32 year old drowns in storm water drain man slips and falls into drain dies 
body of man found five kilometers away from the spot a day after techie drowned to death in the rains now man falls into bengaluru drain and dies complete civic mess over there which is costing lives at the moment this is something that the new administration will have to look at immediately now a 32 year old has drowned in a storm water drain Anagha, my colleague is joining us over the phone line from Bengaluru. Anagha, what happened? Tell us about the incident. Follow me. Uh, so the deceased has been identified as Mr. Loke. She worked as a housekeeping person in a private firm, and he, along with his friends, wanted to check the depth of the, uh, you know, the depth of the flooded drain water. And that is why, when he dipped his leg inside the water, he accidentally slipped, fell inside the water, and succumbed to. the injuries after falling down uh, he along with his friends they just wanted to check the depth of the water and that is why out of this mischievous activity when he tried doing that he accidentally fell inside the water and lost his life okay and what is the administration saying because this is another such incident that is coming to light of civic apathy the trade colony that the administration and the bbmp as well they've said that they will take up measures to prevent such untoward incidents from happening for example uh, tushar girinath has also promised that he will take care of all such underpasses uh, you know there are about 18 such underpasses in bengaluru and all such underpasses that do not have a drainage proper drainage facility will be taken care of is a promise that we are hearing from bbmp and the deputy chief minister dk shivkumar Okay but what what good are these promises Anagha at this point of time I know that the administration of course the state government is a very new government but this is obviously the civic body's responsibility at the end of the day these promises right now are completely a waste because at the moment what we're talking about is loss of life lives are being lost because of the civic apathy well that's right you know this is relatively a new government it's been only a few days since this government came to power and the onus entirely lies with the bbmp even with the previous government the bbmp has been notorious and infamous for its lapses and the kind of shoddy work that it has done in 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 bengaluru so even this recent spate of events which has resulted in loss of lives due to the rain water the onus entirely lies on bbmp no matter how many promises that the bbmp makes it keeps on uh, you know making mistakes and it keeps on letting the ball drop so the, you know it's high time that the civic body bbmp really does buckle up and fix the massive civic apathy issue that has riddled right. the state of bengaluru absolutely anaga thank you so much for joining us for those details we carrying across live to lieutenant governor of jnk manoj sinha speaking like the rest of the states and union territory equally pertinent is that tourism cannot grow in isolation the economic support is fine the tourism needs good infrastructure sound policies and effective and responsive governance no less fundamental to me is the fact that only peace and happiness of people can bring warmth in the hospitality we indians eternally eternally enjoy and i would like to mention here the tourism in jammu kashmir is also a reflection of multi religious and multi cultural ethos of india today jammu kashmir stands among the developed regions of india on some miserable milestones and we are committed for people's prosperity both economically and socially honorable prime minister has completely eliminated injustice exploitation and discrimination which several sections of society face for seven long decades owing to circumstances that evolved mostly because of our frustration from abroad friends we are ensuring social equality and equal economic opportunity to all citizens which is also enabling them to contribute to the nation building grassroots democracy has been strengthened new industries are coming up rapid agricultural growth is making our villages prosperous new institutions have been opened up in higher education youths are being trained for industry 40 infrastructure development is progressing rapidly and our emphasis on technology is transforming jammu kashmir into a digital society in the past 4 years the ranking of jammu kashmir on the various parameters of sustainable development goals have gone up 
thanks to visionary leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji. And the world can see, the entire society, especially the young generation, is scripting a bright future for themselves and the nation. The speed and the scale of rapid development in Jammu Kashmir are awe-inspiring. Our speed to execute infrastructure projects has gone up almost 10 times. I will give you a small example. Only 9,229 projects were completed in the year 1890. In the last financial year, we have completed 92,560 projects. This achievement is a testimony to our resolve of peace and prosperity and making all our citizens equal partners in this journey of growth. Friends, the COVID pandemic made the world realize the hard way, the virtues of travelers' well-being and also the values of a shared vision, one earth, one family and one future. The paradigm shift towards sustainable living, inclusive and sustainable development is also an opportunity to provide new impetus to sustainable tourism. I am truly delighted that under India's G20 presidency, the G20 Tourism Working Group is focusing on five interconnected priority areas. Green tourism, digitization, skills, tourism, MSMEs, and destination management will provide a roadmap for tourism as a tool for achieving sustainable development goals. Friends, it's encouraging for us to share that Jammu and Kashmir is already working on a few of the priority areas identified by the G20 Tourism Working Group, like on green tourism, skills, tourism MSMEs, and digitalization. In the post-pandemic era, these five key building blocks will promote environmental awareness, protect the ecology, and improve, and improve the economy and livelihoods of communities and inclusive growth of stakeholders. During the previous tourism working group meetings, the world has seen that Honorable Prime Minister's vision of life, lifestyle for the environment is at the center of transformation of tourism sector. As I said earlier, the majestic peaks, crystal clear lakes, and serene green landscape of Jammu Kashmir is more than a tourism destination. It is a poetry. It is a land of realization. It is an energy field vibrating with the ageless Indian culture, cultural values. Under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister, we have ensured that the transition in tourism sector in the backdrop of pandemic focuses on needs of travelers interests of industry stakeholders, create employment opportunities, and promote environmental awareness. Numbers are adding to the narrative. Last year, a record number of 18 million tourists visited Jammu Kashmir, and the last year, tourism sector made more than 7% contribution to the Jammu Kashmir GDP. We have identified 300 new destinations to promote green tourism, small and medium enterprises, youth and women entrepreneurs and involve local communities to support the sustainable tourism. This Himalayan region is blessed to have 55% green and forest cover and last year alone we have planted more than 16 million trees to give a renewed push to green tourism and to provide new gateways and stunning eco destinations for the domestic as well as international travelers. Tourism sector in Jammu Kashmir has been accorded the status of industry and all fiscal incentives as per, our industry, as per our industrial policy. And I can tell you, we are receiving massive investment proposal from the industries in the hospitality sector. Friends, Jammu Kashmir used to be the favorite location for Bollywood film industry till late 1980s. After a long pause of almost four decades, we have revived the relationship with Bollywood and launched the film policy in 2021 to attract more investment into film sector and to make Jammu Kashmir most popular film shooting destination. Last year alone, more than 300 movies were filmed in the region and such enthusiasm is bringing about a qualitative change in the lives of the people. For the travelers who want to explore the charming and adorable villages, 
We have come up with the home stay facility. It is being promoted and marketed by harnessing the power of digital tools and it also ensures that incredible ecology is protected and promoted. We are grateful to Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi for his consistent effort to develop Jammu and Kashmir as one of the most sought of the tourist attraction in the world. Places like Gulmar, Pahalgaon, Sonmar, Bangas Valley, Lolab Valley, Srinagar, Jammu, Kistawar, Sanasar, Gurej, Patnitap are now on the global tourism map and offering stunning scenery, skying, snowboarding, trekking, beautiful and iconic mountain ranges, spiritual experiences and rich cultural canvas. Several destinations in Jammu and Kashmir are living examples of connect between the ancient and the modern, inclusive culture, history, music, and traditional cu cuisine that can truly provide elevated travel experiences to the people. We are developing the country's first book village on the banks of Uller Lake and many hiking trails for tourists who love tranquility of nature. Our aim is to make the countryside and popular destinations more sustainable and preserve the beauty of fascinating heritage sites. I am confident under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi, Jammu Kashmir will soon find its place in the top 50 destinations in the world and it will be on the travel bucket list of global, tra global travelers. Through this empowered gathering, I invite the world to Jammu and Kashmir, give us a chance to host you and for you to know us. Come, enjoy and rejuvenate yourself. With these words, I once again welcome delegates of G20 nations. I wish you all a fruitful, enlightened discussion and positive outcomes that will help us building a global architecture for sustainable growth in tourism sector. I hope you will also enjoy our warm hospitality and breathtaking views of the lake. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. I would like to express gratitude to Honorable Lieutenant Governor for sharing his thoughts and would also like to thank him. So that is, of course, the Lieutenant Governor of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Manoj Sinha, making his opening remarks at the third tourism working group of the G20, which is underway in Srinagar. For science and technology, Sri Jitendra Singh Ji to share his thoughts with us. Srinagar City, in fact, is bustling with excitement as it gets set to host the G20 Tourism Meet. Now, this is the first time that Srinagar is hosting a global event since the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019. Now, houseboats and shikaras were illuminated with, in fact, beautiful lights amid the G20 Summit. Those images of Srinagar as it gets set to host the G20 Tourism Working Group. Houseboats and shikaras were illuminated with beautiful lights amid the G20 summit in the Union Territory. It provided a mesmerizing view to the delegates and expressed the region's unique cultural identity. Kashmiri folk songs and folk dance rauf were performed as Jammu and Kashmir starts with the G20 summit. The major focus behind this is to boost tourism in the state. Superstar Ram Charan danced to Natu Natu from his movie RRR and was also seen teaching the steps to foreign delegates. He attended the film Tourism for Economic Growth and Cultural Preservation Meet. Various colourful sports events were organised by Jammu and Kashmir Sports Council across Jammu and Kashmir amid the ongoing celebrations of G20 players belonging to different sports activities participated in many events. Cutting across live now to MOS in the Prime Minister's office, Dr. Jitendra Singh speaking in Srinagar. Here and all the friends from different parts of the country being here. As you all know, the and as, as you've been going around since yesterday, I'm sure this visit of yours will also add some 
added value, the picturesque uh, scenic beauty around, and of course the cuisine, which you might have tasted yesterday, and will continue to do today as well. I think coming straight to G20 presidency worked upon by Prime Minister Modi is Vasudev Kutumbakam, which in other words means one earth, one family, one future. And if you give it a deeper thought, it is in fact a reflection of the reverence that traditionally India has for the value of life. Life in all forms, the human life, the animal life, the plant life, the microorganism life. And the G20 logo reflects three colors, which are indeed the colors of the tricolor, which also happens to be the national flag of India. And the visual of Mother Earth in the logo, we could say symbolizes our pro-planet approach, or pro-planet leanings. And today when we meet, here at the scenic spot of Srinagar, we have this deep realization within us that we are all a part of the global world. And India under Prime Minister Modi is very conscious of that. Our challenges are global, our concerns are global, our benchmarks are global, and our growth has also to be global. And that's why Prime Minister Modi has been time and again in COP meeting expressing his concern about the climate challenges. We have also committed to achieve net zero target by 2070. And I think another significance of uh, holding this event in Srinagar is also that it's a strange blend of our traditional heritage and the most modern infrastructural monuments with cutting edge technology. Srinagar, uh, Kashmir has been one of the earliest seats of learning both in Persian as well as in Sanskrit. It has a wide range of craftsmanship, artisanship, ranging from carpets, embroidery, shawls. Recently we had Basoli painting achieving GI tag. And on the other hand, the most infrastructural upgraded monuments. We have the highest railway bridge of the world over here, which is 35 meter higher than the Elfin Tower. It's located on River Chira, which is one of the largest rivers of India. Incidentally, happens to be a part of my the constituency which I represent in the house of in the lower house. We have the Asia's longest bi-directional road tunnel, which is known as Shama Prasad Mukherjee Tunnel. Incidentally, again a part of my constituency, but that is, I think, what Jammu Kashmir is all about. And uh, I'm sure all these perspectives would add value to our thought processes. I was told in the earlier uh, meetings, the priorities have been green tourism, digitalization skill, MSME tourism, destination management. I'm sure from here we'll move on. And um, India, I would just conclude by sharing, sharing is, is, is ready to share the global responsibility uh, as far as our, as our obligation towards economy is concerned, towards environment is concerned, and towards society is concerned. And also one more aspect which was not talked about over yesterday and when this morning is that Kashmir also has a significant amount of another aspect of tourism, and that is science tourism. A very few kilometers away from now, it is day two of the mega G20 meet in Srinagar, the first global event since the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019. Massive security around Srinagar has been put in place as the G20 meet is underway. Here's a report from Srinagar City. Here in Srinagar, uh, there is heavy security presence because of foreign delegates, diplomats who are here. They will be going to the botanical garden, to Nishad uh, and many places uh, to sightsee and see the beauty of Kashmir. Uh, but the area has been cordoned off for general public. Uh, it's from 8 a.m. 
to late in the evening that this arterial road will not be open for public. They have been stopped. Many of them only with passes are being allowed to go. The others are not being allowed to go is because, uh, but there are uh, diversionary uh, routes that have been given. Uh, those who have to travel from this route have been asked to go through the Hazrat Bal Darga route. Uh, so they are not absolutely inconvenienced but yes uh, we are in Kashmir there are issues when it comes to security and is the reason why they do not want to the authorities here do not want to take any chance and have placed heavy security deployment we've seen have placed security personnel at uh, every nook and corner of the city ensuring that the visiting delegation the dignitaries who are here have a smooth visit and also get to see uh, the importance Important, uh, sites here in Srinagar. श्रीनगर में एक तरफ पर्यटकों की गहमा गहमी है दूसरी तरफ जी ट्वेंटी के जो डेलीगेट्स आए हुए हैं उनका स्वागत सत्कार और बैठक चल रहे हैं जी ट्वेंटी की बैठक को लेकर भले बहुत पांव पटक लिए पाकिस्तान ने लेकिन अब जो तस्वीरें हैं वो पूरी दुनिया देख रही है कि किस तरीके से जम्मू कश्मीर में एक इस स्तर के अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कार्यक्रम का आयोजन किया जा रहा है आ, सुरक्षा व्यवस्था जरूर यहां पर चाक चौबंद है लेकिन इसके साथ ही जरूरी है इस बात पर ध्यान देना भी कि कश्मीर की गति में कोई परिवर्तन नहीं आया है आमतौर पर हम ये देखते हैं कि जब भी कोई बड़ा आयोजन होता रहा था इस क्षेत्र में सब कुछ बंद कर दिया जाता था लेकिन अगर आप देखेंगे तो सब कुछ सुचारू है सब कुछ चल रहा है चाहे आम लोग शिकारा राइड्स करना चाहते हो चाहे फिर दुकानों में जाकर शॉपिंग करना चाहते हो तो एक तरफ पर्यटक भी आ रहे हैं पर्यटन भी यहाँ पर चल रहा है और दूसरी तरफ जी की वो बैठक चल रही है Now the exchange of 2000 rupee currency notes begins in banks across India today amid the rush to get rid of the soon to be outdated currency there is a boom in gold and silver and petrol pumps as well now the SPI informed that a tenderer won't have to fill any requisition form or provide their identity proof if they're getting their 2000 rupee currency notes exchange up to the amount of 20000 rupees at a time only 10 notes can be exchanged at one time pan card is needed for cash amounts more than 50000 rupees a day meanwhile there are three options to exchange uh, in fact these 2000 rupee notes till september 30th first use it as legal tender in shops second exchange up to 20000 rupees in banks and third deposit in your bank account it's a part of the currency management operations of the reserve bank according to section 27 of the rbi act the reserve bank is required to uh, required to uh, not issue notes which are excessively soiled defaced or damaged under that section for a long time the reserve bank has been following what is called a clean note policy therefore from time to time reserve bank withdraws currency notes of particular series and issues fresh notes hamara expectation ye hai hamara expectation ye hai ki most of these notes will come back abhi abhi tak shuru nahi hua exchange kal se shuru hoga hamara expectation hai ki wapas aa jayenge these notes were primarily issued to replenish the currency the you know what you call remonetization that purpose has been fulfilled now what you say what you have just pointed out uh, is right i mean when you have high you see our high value notes this 2000 rupee notes or even 500 rupee notes so far their security features have not been breached not been compromised Meanwhile Samajwadi Party leader Dr Ram Gopal Yadav compared Prime Minister Modi to Mohammed bin Tughlaq listen in मोहम्मद तुगलक को क्या कहा लोगों ने कैसा सवाल किया करते थे आप लोगों को भाई ये शासन के बारे में यहाँ के शासकों के बारे में लोग धारणा है 1500 करोड़ रुपया केवल 2000 नोट के छपाई के लगे थे छपाई की अब इन ये दोबारा छपेंगे नए जो इन्होंने 500 के बंद कर दिए थे छपेंगे कि नहीं छपेंगे फिर छपेंगे तो ये हजारों करोड़ रुपया बर्बाद कर रहे हैं इनको तो कुछ समझ में नहीं आता क्या करना था किंग कर्तव्य विमूढ़ हो गए ये सिर्फ इसलिए किया है कि कर्नाटक में बुरी तरह से हार गए हैं उससे लोगों का ध्यान हटाने के लिए उन्होंने नई पेज डाल दिया हालांकि 
ये तो ऐसा है कि साहब दूसरे की अटेंड करने के लिए अपनी आंख फोड़ लो वही ये कर रहे हैं सब देश को बर्बाद कर रहे हैं Now, the inauguration of the new parliament building by Prime Minister Modi has triggered a massive political storm. The Congress party has accused Prime Minister of breaching constitutional propriety, asserting that as the head of parliament, President Murmu should have inaugurated the new building and not Modi. Congress accused the BJP of playing cheap politics and said that the office of president has been reduced to mere tokenism even the aam aadmi party lashed out at the center calling it an insult to president murmu as well as the tribal and backward communities of the country the trinamool congress alleged that the prime minister wanted to take credit for the new parliament hence he is launching the same he is inaugurating the same stating that the new building is a total wastage of money BJP however gave a befitting reply to the Congress citing proof of times when former prime ministers Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi inaugurated parliament house annex and laid the foundation stone for the parliament library building jis waqt center vista ki baat aayi us waqt bhi inhone negativity aur nakaratmakta ki baat ki thi us waqt bhi kaha tha ki ye kaise ban raha hai ye to ban hi nahi sakta फिर कहा कि साहब ये पैसे का जो है वो दुरुपयोग हो रहा है इनको मालूम नहीं मोदी जी उस मिट्टी के बने हुए हैं कि जो संकल्प लेते हैं उस संकल्प को वो साकार करते हैं और अभी जो जो दो चार दस सीटें आपको या जितनी भी जनता देगी तो आप उसमें बैठेंगे तो आपके दिमाग में जो नकारात्मकता की बर्फ़ जमी हुई है वो थोड़ा सकारात्मक होगी दुख की बात यह है कि जब पूरा लोकतंत्र हर नागरिक गौरवान्वित महसूस करेगा उस वक्त कहीं ना कहीं हमेशा नकारात्मक राजनीति के लिए राहुल गांधी और पूरी कांग्रेस पार्टी जानी जाती है आज इस तरह की खींच इस तरह की नकारात्मकता क्यों सामने आ रही है आप सपना देखते हैं आदरणीय है श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने वो सपना पूरा किया है और जिसको ये मोदी महल कहते हैं ये केवल इनकी जलन और ईर्षा है वो मोदी महल नहीं है ये एक अनूठी पहल है जिसका स्वागत हर नागरिक कर रहा है Parliament is not only of bricks and cement and steel. It is about the voices of people who are voiceless also. Will the mics be on in the new parliament? That's the question we have to ask. Hope that the prime minister realizes that parliament is the temple of democracy. Means we should allow the opposition also to speak, and their mics should also be on. Actually, Mr. Modi wants to take credit. Mm. For building a new Parliament House, mm. in my mind, it is an unnecessary expenditure. It was not necessary. The old Parliament was serving very well. Mm. It would be jettisoning. It would be useless waste of money. If it is to be inaugurated, let it be inaugurated by the President of India. So massive politics that seems to have broken out over the inauguration of the new parliament building which is to happen at the hands of Prime Minister Modi on May 28th so now the Congress and other opposition parties like the Aam Aadmi Party and the Trinamool Congress saying that this is break from protocol this isn't right constitutionally because President Murmu should ideally as the first citizen of the country inaugurate the new parliament building Aishwarya Paliwal is joining us live this morning from Delhi Aishwarya politics which seems to have broken out over the inauguration of the new parliament building seemingly it will only keep intensifying up until May 28th Well, obviously, you know, uh, we have been seeing polemi how the opposition party, especially the Congress party, now is asking the Prime Minister why is it the Prime Minister who will inaugurate the new Parliament building on the 28th of May? But it's a tit for tat. The Bharatiya Janata Party has come out with a video which shows Rajiv Kumar and Indira Gandhi also doing some inaugurations. So definitely, this is something. This is a new bone of contention that we are seeing between the opposition parties and the BJP. Let me also tell you one thing, polemi. It seems like some of the opposition parties might not even accept the invitation given by the Bharatiya Janata Party. for the 28th of may that's also a possibility because they believe that it should be the president and not the prime minister who should be inaugurating the new building paul okay so there is a possibility as aishwarya is reporting that some opposition parties may give it a miss the inauguration of the new parliament building because they believe that president murmu should be inaugurating the building and not prime minister modi aishwarya thank you so much for joining us with those details now opposition leaders are reeling in fact and 
weighing in for a united front against Modi Sarkar. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar met Congress bigwigs Rahul Gandhi and Chief Malikarjun Kharge in order to cement a roadmap for the 2024 Lok Sabha polls. Meanwhile, Kejriwal is also meeting Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee today to gain her support against the newly introduced ordinance on Delhi services. Here's a report. Battle lines are being drawn for the Lok Sabha polls in 2024. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar is at forefront of the mission to unite the opposition. Nitish Kumar on Monday met Congress Chief Malikarjun Kharge and Rahul Gandhi to discuss the roadmap to the grand finale. It was the second such meeting in the last one and a half months. It seems like Nitish Kumar is trying to become the glue which will hold all the opposition parties together. We have seen Nitish Kumar visiting states of Orissa, West Bengal and also Maharashtra. And now he's in the national capital knocking on the doors of the opposition leaders. Nitish Kumar now wants to make sure that over the next three to four days all the opposition leaders come together. And that's exactly the point that the Congress party is also at the moment trying to make. The meeting with Congress Netas came a day after Nitish Kumar and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal called for opposition unity to take on the BJP. Now, you can see what is the power of the government. When the government is elected, the government is elected, the government is elected, the government is elected, the government is elected. That's why we are saying that in all the countries, all the people are united. ताकि ये लोग संविधान का भी और किसी भी चीज का अपने ढंग से जो इधर से उधर कर रहे हैं और किस तरह का माहौल बन रहा है। Meanwhile, Kejriwal is leaving no stone unturned in his fight against the centre. Delhi Chief Minister has sought support of all non-BJP parties on the services ordinance issued by the centre bypassing the Supreme Court verdict. अगर सारा विपक्ष इकट्ठा हो जाता है नॉन बीजेपी सारी पार्टियां इकट्ठी हो जाती हैं तो एक तरह से राज्यसभा के अंदर अगर ये इसको बिल के रूप में लेके आते हैं तो इसको बिल के रूप में हराया जा सकता है राज्यसभा के अंदर और अगर राज्यसभा के अंदर ये बिल हार गया तो ये एक तरह से 2024 का सेमीफाइनल होगा Kejriwal is also set to meet West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee on Tuesday, followed by meetings with Uddhav Thakre and NCP Chief Sharad Pawar on May 24th and 25th. Nitish Kumar has been meeting opposition and regional party leaders for a while now, and a mega opposition unity meet will also be held in Patna soon. These are the part of the exercises which are which for a united opposition. Nidish Kumar is doing his job very well. You cannot expect a miracle in one day or two days. It is an ongoing process. We are on the process. Will the upcoming meet set the platform for a cohesive opposition bloc? Your report, India Today. We're slipping into a very short break. Coming up next, Karnataka Mantri M.B. Patil says no power-sharing formula in Karnataka claims that Sidharamaya will remain Chief Minister for five years. Details on the other side. We broke CM Sita 48 hours before all. Such a victory. Most of them have so We broke Deputy CM DK 12 hours before all. Their exit poll was the exact poll. We broke Karnataka formula 72 hours before all. We have that answer for you now on India Today. Sidra Maya will be the next Chief Minister of Karnataka. India's number one political team is, is unrivaled. Every news break. First on your channel. You are now smiling and accepting Deputy Chief Ministership. We have promised them that we will give a good government with a good governance. Keeping you ahead is our promise. The war has ended. India today stands tall.
this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today. He's coming in right now. Massive security scare at the White House. The truck rams into a security barrier. The truck driver tries to barge inside White House. Bomb squad secret service teams are at the spot. Robotic search team has been deployed to look for bomb. Now, security service, in fact, the secret service finds a Nazi flag from the vehicle. Dramatic images First on India Today, you can see the images of that truck that rammed into a security barrier in Washington, D.C. as it tried to enter the White House. The Secret Service and a bomb disposal squad is at the spot at the moment. They're trying to see if there was a bomb in that truck. A robotic search team has been deployed to look for that bomb. They, in fact, the Secret Service, which is at the spot, has found a Nazi flag from the vehicle. You can see those dramatic images that we're bringing to you first in exclusive on India Today. Shocking breach of security at the White House in Washington, D.C., USA. In fact, uh, that truck which tried to ram into the White House hit a security barrier. That is when the security teams reached the spot immediately and are now searching for any possible explosives on board that truck, that vehicle, what sort of a threat it posed. They're trying to, of course, analyze that and assess that as we speak. What we know so far is that the Secret Service, which is at the spot, has found a Nazi flag from the vehicle. The occupant of that truck, who was driving that truck, were there others? It is being ascertained as we speak. It is a matter of investigation and a very serious security threat there at the White House. Now, images coming in from Karnataka. Massive protests outside Siddharamaya's house. GS Patel backers flock outside the chief minister's house in Bengaluru, demand cabinet birth for GS Patel. Now, GS Patel backers hit the streets against chief minister Siddha Ramaya. You can see those images of those protesters who are basically supporters of GS Patel who want him to be allotted a cabinet birth are now in fact demanding the same, raising slogans outside the chief minister's residence in Karnataka. So after, of course, the Congress tried to quell the aspirations of both Siddharamaya and DK Shivkumar for the chief minister's chair, they got that settled. Now, of course, is this that they're witnessing and that they're faced with, which is basically those who are representatives of big communities who have a lot of support have served 
a few terms as MLAs. They now want a seat at the state cabinet. Remember, just a few days ago, Sh DK Shivakumar was sworn in as Deputy Chief Minister. Sidharamaya was sworn in as Chief Minister and eight other mantris had also been sworn in. The Congress did a whole lot of balancing act as they tried to ensure that there was enough caste and community representation, that age and experience was taken into account as well. There were some young faces as well. But remember that that is not the number at which the Karnataka State Cabinet will stop at. There will be more inductions into the State Cabinet. So you can see now backers of G.S. Patel who want him to be given a Cabinet berth as well. So aspirations of for others who want a seat as well within the State Cabinet now coming to the fore. Supporters now they're raising slogans in support of G.S. Patel right outside the residence of Chief Minister Siddharamaya. You can see those uh, supporters raising slogans in favour of uh, G.S. Patil. He, of course, just recently won the elections and now his supporters want him to be rewarded with a cabinet berth. He, in fact, just recently wrested back the seat from BJP's Kalkappava Bandi. And that is, of course, uh, extremely significant. He wants the Congress to take into account his contribution. My colleague Sagai Raj is joining us live. Uh, the aspirations of uh, many legislators there, Sagai, coming to the fore because they also want to be rewarded for the work that they've done for the party. They believe that the way, of course, Siddharamaya and D.K. Shivkumar were able to arm twist the Congress high command, it's possible that if they, in fact, uh, gather support and right outside the chief minister's residence, there could be some sort of a cabinet berth that could be waiting for them. Absolutely. Even outside DCM residence, there were a lot of supporters. Uh, DCM, DK Shokuma residence, there were a lot of supporters of uh, Nagendra and a few other uh, uh, MLAs demanding that they should also get the cabinet berth. We have also seen uh, a massive protest outside uh, Sidramaya's residence where the supporters of uh, MLA GS Patil had demanded that he should be getting a cabinet berth. If you notice that uh, in, in few pockets of Karnataka, wherever Sidramaya or DK Shokuma had campaigned they had promised the people stating that if at all if you vote your MLA back to power definitely he might be the next minister in the state of Karnataka and there were a large number of people who have also voted for them and uh, now it is time for them to fulfill but the Congress have the problem of too many because they have 100 or around 135 seats across the state and they have to go according to the caste seniority as well as the region so they have to take everything into consideration and thereafter they have to allot cabinet birth to all those eligible MLAs. But when that will happen and how much of repercussion that the party might face post cabinet birth, we need to wait and watch. Okay, so guys stay on with us. We've got more news that's coming in from Karnataka. Now, there won't be any power sharing between Karnataka Chief Minister Sidharamaya and Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivkumar. Karnataka Minister M.B. Patil has confirmed that. He says that Sidharamaya will complete a full five-year tenure as Chief Minister. Says if uh, there was any such power sharing formula, the Congress High Command would have informed them. Now, the two Congress veterans were both vying for the Karnataka Chief Minister's post after the Congress swept the elections in the state on May 13. Now, while the state Congress chief settled for a deputy chief minister's post, that's DK Shivkumar, there was speculation of a 50-50 power sharing formula where both the leaders got to be the chief minister for two and a half years each. But now MB Patel has clarified there is no power sharing formula. Sagai is joining us live from Bengaluru on this. But before that, let's listen in to what MB Patel had to say. <laughs> 
ಇವತ್ತು ಐದು ವರ್ಷ ಹತ್ತು ಸಾವಿರ ಹತ್ತು ಗಂಟೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಪವರ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಯಾವುದನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಆಗಿದ್ರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಸಹ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಕ್ಷದ ವರಿಷ್ಠರು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಅದನ್ನು ಆ ರೀತಿ ಯಾವುದು ಇಲ್ಲ ಈ ಸೇನಮ್ಮ ನಾಯಕ ಎ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಎಂಬ ವೇಣುಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಅವರು ನಮ್ಮ ಎ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯದರ್ಶಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಪವರ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಟು ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಕೊಲೀಗ್ ಸಗಾಯ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಗಾಯ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಪಾಟೀಲ್ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಪವರ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ವಿ ಹಿ ಬಿನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಹೈ ಕಮಾಂಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಸೋ ದೆನ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಪವರ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ವಟ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ See, on the day when uh, AICC had announced that uh, Sidramaya will be the Chief Minister and, and DK Shrikumar will be the Deputy Chief Minister, there are a lot of speculation and reports stating that uh, probably after two years or after three years or, or after looks of an election, there might be change in the leadership where DK Shrikumar will take over as the next Chief Minister uh, within this uh, period. So, but uh, now... uh mb patil who is also one of the cabinet ministers in the state have given a clarification that there is no power sharing if at all if there is a power sharing the icc would have confirmed about this and in fact he has also given a clarification today uh, saying that he was trying to reiterate the statements of kc venugopal while addressing a press conference in delhi kc venugopal had said that there is no power sharing if at all if there is a power sharing it will be with the people of karnataka so he is saying that he was trying to reiterate he didn't say anything new or anything in controversial i was just trying to repeat what aicc general secretary kc venugopal said so but this particular uh, statement from the cabinet minister has uh, uh, made lo- a lot of noise in the state of karnataka where uh, dk shukumar did not speak about this because he has been very vocal on that even talking to rajesh sardesai during his interview he said that he doesn't want to disclose the deliberation or negotiation which has happened during the time of uh, uh, negotiation between sidramaiah and dk shukumar in delhi okay sagar just stay on with us now obviously the bjp is mocking this after mb patel's statement what we're learning right now is that after dk shivkumar's Chief Minister Dreams suffer a big jolt the BJP now mocks the Congress for dashing DK Shivkumar's hopes Sidaramaiah loyalist rejects split CM post for DK Shivkumar now BJP claims that Sidhu DK's government will be shaky BJP takes ATM Sarkara jibe at the Sidaramaiah government My colleague Sagai continues to be live with us uh, Sagai as you were of course uh, discussing about what MB Patel said the BJP of course is using this opportunity to mock the Congress and specifically DK Shiv Kumar saying he in fact bore all these aspirations to become chief minister of Karnataka after the landslide win for the party he did not become chief minister and now there isn't a possibility that he will become chief minister in 2025 either Absolutely if you notice that it has been served in a platter for a BJP and they will continue to attack a Congress on the same lines even if uh, DK Shukumar becomes the chief minister or if he has been replaced uh, uh, by someone else or Sidramaiah has been replaced by DK Shukumar stating that they might target saying that Sidramaiah has been humiliated if DK Shukumar is replaced or they will say that DK Shukumar is humiliated because Sidramaiah is uh, is hellbent to stay back in the power so it is served in a plate for BJP and they will try to target on the same lines against the congress in the days to come okay sagai thank you so much for joining us with all of those uh, details so this is of course an opportunity as sagai said which has been served on a platter to the bhartiya janata party to mock the congress with specifically dk shiv kumar saying clearly his chief ministerial hopes and dreams have suffered a blow after sidaramaiah loyalist mb patel has stated that there is no power sharing formula Government school teacher in Karnataka suspended after criticizing the new Sidaramaiah government on social media while Congress claims the teacher violated government service rules BJP cries foul saying that the suspension was the new Congress government's high-handedness here's a report Sidaramaiah emba yesarina nanu Siddaramaiah taking oath as chief minister in a massive ceremony in Bengaluru 
over the weekend. Ushering in as Rahul Gandhi calls it Pyar Ki Dukaan. Nafrat Ke Bazaar Mein Karnatak Ne Lako Mohabbat Ki Dukaan Ne Kholi Hai. But as Siddharamaya was sworn in, a man paid the price minutes later for a post where he was critical of the now Chief Minister. This is Shantamurti MG, a humble school teacher in Chitradurga. He has been suspended out of the blue by his school. Why? Because he shared a post slamming Siddharamaya. The post claimed Karnataka's debt went up to 2,42,000 crores during his previous stint as Chief Minister from 2013 to 2018. More than the combined debt of past five CMs of the state, according to this post. And so he was suspended, supposedly for violating government service rules by mentioning the debts incurred during the previous government periods. Okay. His issue has snowballed into a political flashpoint in Karnataka. While Congress defended the suspension saying government officers are bound by rules, BJP cried foul saying the suspension was just the beginning of the death of democracy under Siddharamaya. The service rules, the department will have to take action, right? So if the department is saying that what he is shared or what he is uh, voiced his opinion about uh, the performance of the previous government, how the government is against the service rules, then the department will take action. It's nothing that the government has initiated action, right? The department has done so. There have been thousand posts on social uh, social media. For example, there have been uh, Congress uh, supported uh, few people have been lambasting Prime Minister, right, left and center. No one has suspended them. I think this is a high-handedness of the government officials to suspend this teacher only on a on a Facebook post. You can't suspend a person to please the, your political bosses. They have suspended him just to please the political bosses. Is this censorship or a warranted crackdown as per norms? Either way, the Siddhu Sarkara has kicked off business on a stormy note. The teacher alleged that there was no show cause notice or a warning which was being issued much before a suspension letter which was being issued to him. The Congress justified stating that it is an education department which has issued a suspension order and it has nothing to do with the government. But BJP has hit out stating that it shows the duplicity of the party when it comes to BJP, they criticize the government but when the ball is in their own court, they have justified their move. Vithirajan Shivu Sagaras reporting for India Today. Now, heat wave mayhem continues to trouble residents across northern India. Heat wave alert has been issued in several cities of northern India as residents experience soaring mercury levels. Apart from Delhi, parts of Haryana and Punjab are also witnessing scorching heat with maximum temperatures crossing the 44 degree mark in some places. Now, this is the first widespread heat over such a large part, including parts of Uttar Pradesh, parts of Madhya Pradesh, and even covering isolated pockets of Jharkhand and West Bengal. Now, as per the Med Department, light rain showers are expected to bring relief in Delhi from Wednesday onwards for three to four days. Chandigarh and Punjab grappling with heat wave. We are in Chandigarh right now. Let me show you. Uh, there are several people out here all having a juice or something to drink uh, but it's getting really hot it's somewhere over 40 degrees uh, let's just try and have a word uh, temperature 
और हम टूरिस्ट हैं और हमारे को यहाँ पर देखने को मिला ठंडे पानी की व्यवस्था भी नहीं है गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से कोई वाटर कूलर नहीं है कोई कुछ भी नहीं है पानी के लिए बहुत परेशान हो रहे हैं तो हमें जूस पीना पड़ रहा है पानी के लिए हम सिर्फ या तो बोतल खरीदे या फिर कोई कहीं पे भी मार्केट में कहीं ऐसा कोई वाटर कूलर या कुछ भी अवेलेबल नहीं और लोगों से पूछते हैं कितनी गर्मी है बहुत तेज गर्मी है बहुत ज्यादा गर्मी है हालत खराब हो रही है हमारी तो बहुत ज्यादा बाहर निकालने में मतलब हम निकले तो हैं लेकिन ऐसा लग रहा है कि घर में रहते तो बढ़िया रहता बहुत ज्यादा गर्मी है हालत खराब हो रही है टूरिस्ट बट लेट मी टेल यू दिस इज वेयर वेंटर्स आर आउट हियर एंड ऑब्वियसली फॉर देम लॉर्ड ऑफ हार्ड वर्क लॉर्ड ऑफ स्वेट बट ऑल्सो मीन्स लॉर्ड ऑफ बिजनेस Uh, but yes, advisories have now been issued because the temperatures are all set to rise, and this is where the advisories have been issued uh, by both governments of Chandigarh as well as Punjab, and the administration here has alerted people uh, to stay indoors at least during the peak hours of summer heat. With camera person Chandhi Ram, this is Kamaljit Sandhu in Chandigarh for India Today. And that's a wrap on this bulletin. For all the latest news and updates, you can log on to IndiaToday.in. You can also download the India Today app. Thanks for watching. Are devastating for stray animals. The scorching heat wave means animals living on the street struggle for water. Karma Foundation is on a mission to make life easy for stray animals. This water bowl challenge is also one of such initiatives where we know during the scorching heats of summer has to provide the basic requirement for the for the health of the pet which is water and hence we are actually donating the water bowls these water bowls are a big relief for stray animals living under the open sky in sweltering weather karma foundation has requested people to join their movement by placing a bowl of water outside their home or workplace bureau report india today forecast now Delhi maximum 43 and minimum 32 degrees Mumbai maximum 31 and minimum 28 degrees Kolkata maximum 39 and minimum 26 degrees Bangalore maximum 34 and minimum 23 degrees Chennai maximum 33 and minimum 28 degrees Hyderabad maximum 38 and minimum 25 degrees
watching India Today. Modi kickstarts the Australia tour by meeting with company CEOs and Australian businessmen. Former Australian Prime Minister Albert Hales Modi calls him natural leader of free world. Old politics over new parliament. Opposition targets the Prime Minister over the inauguration. Claims insult to the President of India. BJP slams the Congress over parliament hypocrisy. Cites the examples of Indra Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi. 2024 Gadbandan talks fast track. Now Nitesh intensifies mission opposition. Arvind K. Jival to meet Mamata and Uddhav for support. Karnataka Mantri MB Patil says no power sharing claims Sidhu will remain chief minister for five years. NIA team visits London to, to probe the Indian mission attack. Five-member NIA team leaves for London to probe the mob attack on the Indian High Commission on the 19th of March. <laughs> Navy's Made in India missile destroyer NS Mormugao in action hits supersonic sea skimming missile target with deadly accuracy. A very good morning. You're watching India Today TV. Those are the headlines. I'm Sneha Murdani and here's what our top focus at this hour. We're talking about Prime Minister Narendra Modi who is in Australia for the last leg of his three-nation tour. And his Australian visit is filled with big events. He kick-started his visit by meeting top Australian CEOs and businessmen. The Prime Minister met the Executive Chairman of Fortis Future Industries among many other Australian businessmen. Amid much fanfare, the Prime Minister, a plane full of the Indian diaspora landed in Sydney with Indians donning tricolour turban. The diaspora booked a chartered plane and flew from Melbourne to Sydney only to meet the Prime Minister. Now, even when the Prime Minister landed in Sydney, he got a grand welcome from the Indian diaspora and Modi Modi chants echoed across. The Prime Minister will attend a community event to celebrate diverse Indian diaspora. Almost Two lakh Indians are set to pack the Sydney Stadium. Right now we are in front of the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So a group of eight, a, a group of eight people they have climbed this bridge and we have made the history. First it was Modi Airways in the morning 6:30 that uh, took off from Melbourne to Sydney. That happened first time and now we have climbed this harbour bridge you can see here. This is Australia India friendship climb and we are here. There are two pillars. You can see that every friendship has two pillars. We have seen the friendship from Maha Bharat, where we have you know Krishna Arjuna or where, where we have Krishna and Sudama. So similarly Australian and Indian PM they are meeting here. As we can see the tallest uh, arc bridge in front of me, you can see that we are meeting our tallest leader of the world. You can see the excitement in the diaspora. What I can say, Namo is best, east or west, Namo is the best. And today we have gathered around 18,000 Indian diaspora who have come from different states to see or to hear their uh, beloved Prime Minister Modi. I have written a song for him. If I get a chance, I, I, will, I, would, like to, uh, I would like to sing that song to, in front of this camera. Everyone will sing with me. Yeah. Namo 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 Suraj sa tej dikhe jis mein taaron si jag mag ho Suraj sa tej dikhe jis mein taaron si jag mag ho Namo 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 Vishal Monga is getting us all of those details, joining us from Sydney right now. Vishal, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, the kind of mood that you get to see from these, from these reports, from these visuals, just speaking volumes of uh, how popular really Prime Minister Narendra Modi is and the kind of connect, which is just so interesting and we've spoken about this for many years. It's 
I don't think anybody else had this kind of a connect with an Indian leader. Uh, any members of the diaspora had this sort of a connect that Prime Minister has, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, indeed, we are here, and inside you can see that a lot of Indians, diaspora people have gathered here. Approximately, expected that 20,000 plus people would be here. Inside the stadium, we have some of the ladies, uh, people from Indian diaspora who are here to welcome uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. You are here. How do you expect that this environment, how do you plan to welcome Prime Minister Narendra Modi? I have come all the way from Melbourne to welcome our Narendra Modi. So it's a extremely overwhelming experience for all of us here in Australia. We have been living in Australia for past 20, 30 odd years and it's such a proud moment that Modi is here today and the amount of things he is doing for India and we are super proud to be Indians. We are so proud that Modi is here today and we just love Modi. How, how big is this event? Do you see this kind of crowd normally in Melbourne or Australia? We have around 25,000 odd people coming in here today. And I believe every state has been allocated different amount of tickets. I'm pretty sure thousands of people are coming from Melbourne as well. We did have a Modi Airlines fly in from Melbourne this morning. So I have a lot of Modi fans coming along in the Modi Airways this morning as well for the event. So you have the people have come not only from Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, Tasmania. A lot of people have come here and it is expected that around 20,000 plus people would be here welcoming Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a superhero style. That's right. You know, Vishal, uh, of course, uh, the excitement is, uh, is, is for us to see right here with an entire plane of uh, members of the Indian diaspora actually flying down to meet with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But just talk to us a little about what really the plan is as far as uh, today's uh, concern, bilaterals are concerned, and, uh, and what next for the Prime Minister as part of his itinerary? Yes, indeed, what I can tell you is that the program will start at around 5 o'clock and it will go on for around two hours. And uh, right now, the stadium is, uh, you can see a lot of MPC. Will really fill in uh, within half an hour from now. Uh, not only that, uh, people from Melbourne, but also the CEOs of top companies met Prime Minister Narendra Modi today, and the focus and the agenda was trade between India and Australia. That's very important. Tomorrow is a big day for Australia and India, where the bilateral talks would uh, be. Uh, they there will be bilateral talks between the Australian Prime Minister and the Indian Prime Minister. Let's again go back to the people who have come here. Now you come here. How important are the ties between India and Australia?